All right, welcome to the playlist to create this pegboard toy. So this is going to be one of our first assemblies. So we're going to learn a lot about <clears throat> how to um, create parts and components inside of one design file, and we're going to create this little toy where we have these different shapes that can go inside of here. All right. So um, in order to do this, um, we're going to have to do a couple of different things. Um, first, you're going to start up uh, Fusion, and I'd like you to make a, a new folder in your project for IED, and I'd like you to call it um, like Pegboard Toy. Okay. All right, and once you've got that folder made, my screen out of the way, um, I've got a second one because I've already done this, um, so I named mine Pegboard Toy 2. Um, but then you're going to open that folder uh, before you save any files um, because that's where it's going to save the file. Okay, so now I'm going to go up here to the little picture of this little disc and I'm going to hit save. And you'll see that it's pointing to the pegboard toy um, folder. And I'm going to go ahead and name it pegboard. And I'm going to hit save. So now you'll see that it's um, got a title or a name, and it's saved in the correct location, and you can see that this is what we're going to be designing. Okay, so you have this print. You can find it in Schoology. Um, you should really have it um, open, and you should really be following the dimensions on the print, but this video is also going to be guiding you into um, how to read the prints and create each part or each component in Fusion as we go. All right. So as I scroll through the print, you'll first see that we've got a parts list that identifies all the different components inside of this, um, this project. So we've got, a, uh, we've got one side, and we've got a little bubble that points to the, the right side of this thing. And we've got a puzzle base, and that's a bubble number two, which is pointing to the horizontal piece in which the blocks are placed. And then we've got uh, item number three, which is right, um, bubble number three, and that's the left side. And then we have the uh, cylinder, the square, and the triangle, which are the puzzle pieces that fit into the slots. Now, um, if I count, I've got a total of six different items or different pieces that I'm going to make. Okay? So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this little waffle iron just so I have more room to work. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start by creating one of the sides. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move up to the assemble um, toolbar and I'm going to click right where it says new component. And you'll see that a window appears um, asking me to give it a name. I'm going to use that parts list and I'm going to use the exact names that the parts list is showing me. So I'm going to call my first part um, side, and I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll see over here in the browser that um, a new component is shown with the radio button um, activating that component. So no longer is the assembly activated, we've got a component activated. So I'm going to start a sketch, and I'm going to pick the XY plane, which is this one right here. And I'm going to pick it. Alrighty, so let's do this. Let's look at the print, and I'm going to go to the second page, and what you're going to see is the drawing for that side. Um, I'm going to start with um, thinking about how I want to model this, and if I look at the right view, it looks like I can probably draw this entire profile and extrude it to a distance of 2.5. And you can see the isometric in the corner. It's a pretty easy piece to make. So if I'm going to do that, um, I could also do it in two steps if I wanted to uh, make it easier. If I had you know, first started using Fusion and I'm not real clear on how to use the trim command, I could do it with a subtract. But I think I'm going to um, do this in one operation. Uh, let me just shrink down this window, just so you guys can see my sketch a little bit easier. There we go. All right. So I'm going to draw a, a rectangle, 
And when I look at this print, and I know it's really small for you guys, maybe I'll put it off to this corner here. All right, that's a lot better. Okay, so what you're going to notice is that the overall height of this, um, I'm going to go down to dimension. Oops, create dimension. So the overall height of this is 4. So I'm going to type in 4 and press enter. And the overall width is, if I look, 0.5. Okay, so there's my um, overall profile. If I click on this little hand, I can center it a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another rectangle inside of here, but I'm going to make sure I snap not to the midpoint. Be careful. See that little triangle? You don't want to click there. I'm going to go somewhere up here away from the triangle. I'm going to click, and I'm just going to drag out um, kind of random. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Um, it was definitely random, but I made sure that I snapped the rectangle onto this front edge, and now I'm going to dimension it. So I'm going to go to Create, go to Dimension, and if I look, um, the width of this slot, in other words, how high it is, is uh, 0.5 inches. Okay, right here you'll see it's 0.5 inches tall, and then the depth of the slot, you can see in the right view, is a quarter of an inch. So I got to add those in. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to, I could also press D on my keyboard, which um, jumps me right to dimension. So I'm going to type in 0.5, and then my depth, how deep it goes in, is 0.25, not 3, 25. All right. Now if I zoom out a little bit, um, and then I go back to my print over here, um, you're going to notice that, that that little slot is 2 inches off the bottom. So that's when I have to click on my bottom and then to where the bottom of this rectangle is. And then if I slide out, oh, it looks like my dimension command was not um, activated. So I guess I should press D again and try that one more time. Come on. One more time with the letter D. There we go. And type in 2, and now I've just placed that dimension. All right, so now I've got my, my, my profile here. I actually have two profiles, so when I finish my sketch and I um, you know, go to extrude this, I could rotate it with my orbit tool just a little bit so I can see it at an angle. And if I just pick this region, I don't want to pick that. Um, and I'm going to drag it forward, and I'm going to type in, if I look at my print, it looks like um, two and a half inches is how... Um, far that's supposed to extrude. 2.5. And there we go. Now um, this part is done. This component is done. So I'm going to jump out of my, uh, my component. Make sure you do this. Make sure you jump out by activating the assembly. Okay. So there we go. Now, I want to build this as if um, I was assembling something on my desk, as if I went and I bought a model or I bought a craft kit and I was kind of sticking these pieces together. So the next logical thing to do would be to put in the, um, the horizontal puzzle board that fits into this slot. So that's the next part. So if I scroll down in my print to the next page, you're going to see the um, puzzle base which is um, the horizontal piece. It's six inches long. It's also a half inch thick. Um, you'll see that from right here. So what I'm going to do is making sure and double checking um, to see that my uh, assembly is activated up here in my pegboard. I'm going to come over and I'm going to make a new, uh, new component from the assembly. I'm going to name it Puzzle Base because this is a um, the base in which you're going to drop the cubes into. So puzzle base. Okay. Now, um, when I create my sketch for this one, I don't want to use these little planes that it, they give me. I'm actually going to click on the existing components face, which is this front edge right here. So I'm going to click on that. 
And the reason why is because I'm going to build the part from the little groove here. So I'm going to first center my, my, uh, my part. I click in the little hand and then right click um, to get out of this. I can right click and hit OK. Now I'm going to go up to my rectangle and I'm going to snap it to the, to the corner and I'm going to drag it down and out. Um, make sure you just kind of just drag it out a little bit and click because then I can add the dimension, um, create dimension, the width, if I look at my print, it should be 0.5. And then of course the length, if I look at my print, should be six. So there's the front view of my um, puzzle base. And now I can extrude it by clicking that and dragging it in this direction to uh, negative 2.5, um, which according to my print is how deep it should go. And I will uh, select OK. Now, um, if I look at this, you'll see that everything is lined up. Um, it's built from the components in the assembly. Now, <clears throat> when I go back to my assembly and I activate my pegboard, there's something I need to do before I move ahead. So stop what you're doing and make sure you do this. When I built these, or when you built these, these are literally just sit, imagine them sitting on your table and they can, they're free to move around. So don't do this, but notice if I click my left mouse and drag, I can move these things. So I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna click undo. All right, so we have to fix that. So it's almost like if you're in space and imagine an astronaut with a bunch of things out in space and they're just laying them on, a, on the surface of the, of the spaceship. Maybe there's a table on the moon or something. Um, things can just move around unless they're fixed in place. So one of these components as we start building, we have to right click on, and usually it's the first one that you build which was for us, the side. We have to right click on that and go to ground, okay? It's almost like taking a nail and just um, sticking it in there and making sure it doesn't move in any direction. So I'll do that again. Um, right click on, on your side one, go up to ground and click it. And you're gonna see this little thumb tack next to it. So if you click away from it so it's no longer highlighted and now you try to move it, it will not move. Okay, if you try to grab it, it doesn't move. Now, the puzzle base, if I left click and drag it, it will move. Uh-oh, I better click undo once to put it back. Okay, so here's where I'm going to teach you about joints. Okay. A joint is a way for us to stick things together permanently, okay? So it's, again, think of like putting a craft together on a table. You're going to generally use like glue or tape or a screw or something to stick things together and um, make them stay together. Now, some things we want to move, like a hinge or something that rotates or slides. Um, but this, I don't want it to move. So I'm going to create a joint. Now there's a couple of different types of joints, different methods. But since we already built these in place, I'm going to use a very easy option, which is called as built joint. It's nice because since I already built this um, together and I didn't move it, if I click as built, what I can do is I can say, I want this to be rigid. Rigid means I don't want them ever to move from one another. So if, and I'll do this once again, you go up to assemble and you go up to as built joint and we're gonna make sure it says rigid. If you drop it, you'll see there's a lot of things that, can, that, that it can do, but for this, I wanna make it rigid. And then I'm gonna pick um, first, the part that um, is still allowed to move, so in this case, it's gonna be the puzzle base, and then my second click is gonna be the side, which has been grounded. 
And now I'm going to hit OK. Now if you go back and try to grab it, it does not move. If you're wondering where all these joints are going, there's a joint folder. If I open it, you'll see that there's the rigid joint I just created. Okay? I can always delete it. I can always modify it if I don't like it. But that's where it goes. All right. Um, moving on. It's time to make our next um, side. So I'm going to just use pan to get this a little bit better centered so you can see what we're doing. Um, now I'm going to go back up to the assemble, new component. This one I'm going to call side number two. And if you noticed in the print, side, oops, caps locks on. Side two, all right. So if you've noticed, in my print, um, the first side actually says quantity two. I apologize, I gotta move the screen over a little bit so you can see it. Um, so it says quantity side, uh, quantity two for side two. Uh, so basically that means that um, you're gonna make two of these basically the same on both sides. So you're just replicating it. Yes, there are ways to duplicate parts, but I think it's good practice for you right now to make it again. So I'm gonna make a sketch. I'm gonna pick the front surface of this little uh, face. I'm going to um, drop a rectangle just across intersecting here, just like that. I'm going to dimension, I pressed the D key. I'm going to make it four inches tall. I'm going to make it a half of an inch wide. I'm going to drop a rectangle in, not snapping to the midpoint. That would be not good. I'm going to dimension the height of this little slot to be 0.5. And I'm on the iPad, guys, so this is all doable. 0.25. I do you have a keyboard, though. So that would be about the only thing that you can complain about. So this is going to be uh, two inches. All right. Now, I want to be able to build this in place. All right. So <clears throat> what I want to do is, oops, I accidentally pressed a button that dropped me out of the portal. I'm sure you guys run into this problem all the time. Okay, we're back. Um, so what I want to do is I want to move this geometry. I'm going to right click and say OK. Cancel. So I want to move this geometry and snap it so I can literally left click and hold this corner and drop it right to there. So I dropped it to that corner and it all turned black because all this geometry was constrained but it didn't know where it was supposed to be locked to. So I dropped that corner to this corner, and now it all turned black. All right, I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude, but only that profile, not the little um, rectangle inside. I'm going to go in the opposite direction, negative uh, 2.5, and press OK. All right, I'm going to activate my assembly again so everything is visible. Um, I'm going to hit Save. Now you're probably asking, how come I didn't uh, do all the stuff in the top of this plate. Um, I kind of wanted to save that um, for last so that you guys had an opportunity to maybe do some creative things with those inside circles and squares and triangles. Um, and I also wanted to show you that you can always go back and you can always modify any of these components. So let's go ahead and let's, let's work on that right now. So I'm going to go back to the print for um, this, the puzzle base, and I'm going to look at the circle, the square, and the triangle. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick my puzzle base, and I'm going to activate that. I'm going to make a sketch on the top surface, and what I want to do is I want to drop um, each of those three shapes somewhere near the middle um, of the face of this plate. So a circle, um, a square, and then yes, you can draw a, uh, a triangle. If you go to create, 
there's a polygon feature. And um, I'm not going to get into the difference between circumscribed and inscribed. It just um, has to do with when you enter an, a, a diameter, it's where it's measuring from. But um, if I draw one, you'll see by default it's giving me a six-sided um, polygon. Um, if I take my mouse and I hover over this number six and highlight it, I can type in three. And now all of a sudden I have a, uh, a triangle. I'm just going to kind of randomly um, stick that triangle um, in here, and I'm going to use my dimensions and my constraints to pull it into size. Okay? All right, now let's start with the circle because I think that one's probably the easiest. So when I look at the circle, um, I know that the diameter needs to be um, one inch, so I'm going to start with that. Uh, I just clicked dimension, dragged it out, drug it out, drug, drag, whatever. Uh, I'm going to press 1 for 1 inch, and now it is 1 inch, but it's still, it's still blue. That's because it doesn't know where it's supposed to go. Um, if I look at my print, you'll notice it's supposed to go um, 1.250 um, off of the edge and off of the front. So I'll go ahead and add those in. So um, be careful what you're clicking. This edge is the edge of the actual side. You'll notice it's a little bit grayed out. This edge is the edge of the puzzle base. So when we're in assembly, uh, when we're in component editing mode, remember your sides right now are grayed out. You can still kind of see them like a ghost, but uh, so just be careful what you're clicking on. So I'm gonna drag this dimension up. I'm gonna type in 1.25. And then from the bottom to the center, drag it out, 1.25. So my circle is now constrained. It's black. I'm going to move on to my rectangle. My rectangle needs to be a 1 by 1 square. Um, so I'm just going to give it um, two sides that are 1. Perfect. And then if I look at my print, um, I kind of left the dimensions off of this for the location of the um, of the actual uh, rectangle because I didn't want to add too many dimensions on this print and get it all messed up. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to kind of do the math on this and space it so that it's centered. And if you remember, um, the overall distance between here and here was 2.5. So if you subtract 2.5 from 1, you're left with uh, uh, 1.5. So half of 1.5 gives me 0.75. So that's the spacing um, from right there to right there. Okay, and if you remember um, the overall length of this uh, from uh, the overall length of this entire puzzle base was six inches, and if you take one away from that, that leaves you five. Half of five is 2.5. You guys got to start using some good math skills in here. All right. Now, I did give you the dimensions for the triangle, but my triangle is kind of rotated a little bit. It's kind of in a weird position. So here's what I want to do with that. Um, I'd like to use these constraints up here. Um, these, are, these are geometric constraints. Um, if I want to rotate this so that the bottom line that I have highlighted is um, perfectly um, collinear or also horizontal um, like this one, I can come up to here and I can use these geometry terms. So if you've had geometry or you're in geometry, you might see that these are familiar to you. Um, like collinear, for instance, means two lines um, share the same um, uh, line. So they're in line with one another. So if I pick that, I can pick uh, like this line and this line, and you can see what it just did. It forced them to share the same line. So that's one way um, to constrain things. So it's kind of a handy way too. Uh, I'm going to move this window just a little bit out of my way here so you can see. Um, now I'm going to dimension, oops, got to click dimension first. The point here to the point there to be 1.25 according to my print. Just like that. And then the width of the rect uh, rectangle triangle down here should be one. 
Nope, 1.25, sorry. Okay. Now, the only other thing I think that's keeping this thing from being constrained, let me right click, and say cancel. If I grab it and drag it, let's see what moves. Really see anything? Uh, let's see. I, you know, I got this dimension, this dimension. This this collinear keeps it from moving up and down. I'm going to say go ahead and finish your sketch for this particular project, and then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it, and we're going to cut each of these three features. So take that arrow and drag it down, and then there you go. Now you've got your three different whole features. I'm going to reactivate my scat or my assembly, and now I have my um, pegboard ready to go for the pieces that we can make um, coming up here in just a minute. All right. So again, just to review, we started with our side, we grounded it, and we. Sorry. I listen to bells all day, guys. It's really so anyway, we started with the side, we grounded it, and then we built these other components. Um, one thing we didn't do yet, I can grab this side and move it. Hopefully you have the answer to that. I'm going to hit undo. All we need to do is go up to assemble, as built joint, make sure it's set to rigid, click on first the part that's able to move, second click on what you want it to be rigid to, and then click OK. So now everything is locked in place, ready to move. All right, excellent. So now we're going to move on to creating the pieces that go inside. So our second video for this playlist is going to cover that. I realize this is a long video, and it's probably best that I do this in the second part. All right, so we'll see you in the second part.